Okay. So now our imaging is done, uh, which is the OU scan. As you can see, there are one and two. Both the slides are here. And it has done pretty good object selection, but I will go to each of them one by one. You can zoom in, and you see it has done the pretty good object selection. I just drag and then make it a smaller one so that I can save some time. Hit the focus map. Too many focal points. I will use this guy. That's good enough. Uh, same way for this guy. Edit the scan area. This is good. And it will focus map. Yeah, this is good enough. Next. Uh, all of these are good. Uh, and this. Just do the scan now. That's it. Well, I thought it was scanned. Huh? I thought it was already scanned. Uh, so it did an overview scan. Mm. And now we are doing 20x magnification scan. Oh, okay. So it was an overview until here. Mm. Then it asked me to review if everything is all right. You mm -hmm. want to change the focal points or whatever. And then you do the batch scan. So if you have 50 slides, you need to go through 50 slides. Yeah, one by one. 50 slides you will do mm. in one mode. Mm. One, one done, once and done, mm. everything. And then you let it run for all the 50 slides. Oh. So compare this to the confocal microscope. For stitching, we had to do some drama. Mm -hmm. And here I am doing all the image stitching on the fly automatic. So it becomes much easier to scale up the imaging for big areas. Mm -hmm. But of course you don't get that level of uh, control and that level of clarity at the deeper level because the highest you can go is 40x, uh, but not more than that. Mm -hmm. So you have to compromise either speed or accuracy. Mm. So whichever you want to choose. Okay. So now it is doing all the green, green, green everywhere. And it is going to image rapidly. And as soon as the imaging is done, then it will switch to the next one. Well, any other question from your side? No. Simple microscope. So you cannot put the uh, price field and the uh, huh? fluorescence together? You can. You can? You can. Oh. You see. Uh, there will be an option for uh, doing that. You can add multiple scans and do multiple things mm -hmm. at the same time. People rarely do that because if it is designed for bright field, it is not designed for fluorescence mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. vice versa. But for some very, very rare samples, you mm -hmm. can do that. You just like add, add a scan and then keep on adding more and more scans, one by one, mm -hmm. layer by layer. And while the imaging is going on, I cannot use the microscope because it's more or less uh, on the standby mode for me. It is using all the resources to do the processing. And you see that it, the image opened here and then it closed automatically. So it's saving the files directly here in this folder, one by one. Mm -hmm. And the images are on auto contrast mode, so you can always change the contrast by fixed scaling if you want to compare between different samples, especially in fluorescence. Uh, image might look bright, but just that, uh, just because it looks bright doesn't mean it is bright. It could be because uh, uh, just because it is looking bright doesn't mean it may, it may be bright. It could be because the auto contrast has adjusted the parameters in such a way that it looks bright. Mm. So in that case, you always keep the minimum and maximum fixed, and then accordingly, all the images will be. Uh, in the same scale and as you can see the brightness differences. When we run out of cleaning solution, we refill with absolute ethanol that is present in the uh, histology core. Doesn't need to be super high grade, just good enough for cleaning. 200 proof, just 100 percent. Yeah. Mm. And this was not supposed to be here, it is from the salt up area, but we will still bring it here. This is good enough for cleaning their slides, but people like it this way.
Okay, so imaging is done and I will say finish. So all the batch scans for the bright field is done. Now we'll quickly go to fluorescence. Okay. Again, automatic load. Pick the slide, put it up here. Now this time there will be a lot many more options because you have to do the uh, colors wavelength by wavelength uh, and also the exposure for each of them has to be set. Hence more options are there uh, but the same scaling up protocol will be ap applicable for batch scan mode also. So far we had been using the color camera, which is for the bright field. Now we will be using the uh, big camera. Okay. So slide number 4 and 6. And this is now put to some other location. So what it means, the app for the bright field and fluorescence are different. So you will have to reset this thing again, the storage location. Each lab has the, their own folder, so we keep it in that. next and now there are multiple modes as you asked right so one can do bright field you can do tissue or cells the difference between the two so far about I have learned is that tissue are large so accordingly it will look for larger objects cells will be small objects but it won't matter much actually like if you start doing it. and you can do overview here at 2, two magnification 2x two and 10x uh, if you do it 2x you will be able to image fast but it will be lower intensity and 10x will be brighter but it will take forever so accordingly we have to choose wisely now uh, the sample that I place it has got three colors it has got 405, 488 and 561 which will be basically uh, here DAPI, FITSI and uh, Texas Red in this case ok or Psi 3 also kind of that works uh, now in my sample I already know that uh, Texas Red is the brightest but usually we don't know so we will begin with any particular wavelength like this uh, or it, it is uh, cells in my case so I pick this guy and choose Tappy and go and do live ok if I click live right now it is imaging somewhere at the bottom I will bring it to the center and you can see this is the cover slip edge if I bring it in These dots you see here, these are tiny nuclei okay, of cells. Uh, the intensity is so low, like it is like 180, 190, or 200 units, which is very, very dim. So maybe uh, let me try some other color, like Fitzy, at 100 millisecond exposure. Okay. Now it is a little better, I can see the cell structure and things like that. The intensity is like 1000 units. But 1000 units is coming because of these random bright spots, because the cells look pretty noisy uh, so I will now try Texas red and cells look very nice beautiful and 11,000 uni units so it's pretty good so in fact I don't need even like 100 milliseconds I can do at 50 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds okay. let's see at 20 milliseconds then I'm getting 2,000 units which is pretty good signal anything above 1,000 is a good signal anything mm -hmm. below than that is questionable uh, so I will use 20 milliseconds and use Texas Red here. So I have to select Texas Red and put 20 millisecond and then do and I always keep this auto contrast on. Why it is important because while it is imaging, it will look dim or bright. It will auto contrast it to the right range so that I can see the object and draw the region of interest or ROI. Now it is going to do 20 millisecond exposures like this. It is scanning like this, going back and forth. I don't see the object yet because it is on uh, different contrast mode. And as soon as the imaging was done, you saw that this suddenly showed up. This was because of this option. If you don't have that, this will continue to stay dark. So make sure that that option is checked. Uh, uh, these areas have been imaged a lot, so that's why it became dim. So I'll pick maybe some of these areas. Okay. 
uh, and this case because it is cells I will use 40x uh, I will do one position mode next here is a scan area it <laughs> picked up some random object here so I, I will go and delete that I can draw any object like this for example say suppose this is good this time I will be doing scan and focus on whole sample because it was not able to identify the object at all are you able to choose like a different box or it has to be continuous a big box no no you can draw multiple oh, boxes okay. 10 boxes 50 mm. boxes like mm. that you can draw as many okay and I will select now this guy a good enough number of points because these are single individual cells so I will have more points now there is very one important feature uh, it's uh, basically the protocol it is using to image so either it can image one color at a col place and then keep imaging the same color x y or it can do all three colors at the same place mm. move x y again three colors again move x y and keep on doing that now second protocol is very slow and it hurts the microscope also because if you if I change the color for example here you hear that sound yeah, so that means it keeps changing the filter wheel. Right. so if you follow the second protocol it will keep changing the color the color sound uh, so it will take three or four times more longer time image quality will be more or less same mm -hmm. so why bother so if something somebody does that uh, they have to go and make sure that they press shift you have to press shift if you don't press shift that option will not show up okay so press shift and more options there is expert settings under expert settings this is the one which I was talking about where it will keep making curl 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 sound and second one it will move xy before switching channel so I would like to always use the second option until unless it's a live sample which this one cannot use anyway uh, in most cases uh, the second option works pretty well now if I just click more options that expert settings will not show up so in order to access expert setting one needs to be expert enough to press the shift button okay. uh, I, I think the software guys was having some fun <laughs> okay. so uh, that's there now if for some reason uh, like you come across somebody who uh, is doing that and it is making sound lots of it I come I tell the users to uh, make sure that they fix it if it is not their login if it is somebody else's login I tell them to go here and check out who is the user okay. if they know that user call them and fix it right away if they don't know user, you, you, the user then I tell them to email to imaging core or the whoever is the in charge okay. that way it can be fixed right away because uh, if it is run for that long like that then it will reduce the life of the filter wheel okay. uh, next I will now change the exposure for different colors for now I will delete all the colors ok I can add one by one so for example Dapia will add here uh, then I have uh, Fitzy and Texas Red three colors only ok now whichever color is on the top will be used for focusing so if your sample for example in this case I only have one sample I know that Texas Red is brightest I will use it for focusing and I will bring this up by clicking this button but in case if you have multiple samples and uh, say suppose Texas Red keeps fluctuating between different samples so I won't like to use this for focusing and this could be my focusing sample uh, like uh, or the measurement channel actually so if I expose this channel for focusing it might photo bleach also so it might get uh, it might affect my uh, uh, data so for that case I like to use a standard channel like DAPI. DAPI is present everywhere it's uh, in all the samples most likely if you have stained for it of course uh, but it doesn't fluctuate from sample to sample most cases hence I will use this for focusing in that particular case and then image with other colors okay. uh, so in this case because I can I have the liberty of playing around with this so I, I will bring this up and now I will do start live I will bring this thing to my sample light node is focusing somewhere random place I will bring it here I can use this to focus but it is somewhere within the range I will use this control and then try to use this step okay. so it looks pretty nice and bright 30,000 units 
pretty darn bright at fastest imaging speed which is 3.2 milliseconds you cannot go faster than that okay so this is the shortest expo shortest exposure that i can give it and if i move around even little bit here and there intensity is still pretty bright okay so and it is actually maxing out uh, now if i go to a different color like that uh, at 3.2 milliseconds i'm getting 6000 units which is pretty good uh, for routine imaging because uh, i don't care much about the texture or the shape of these nuclei it's just dots so uh, that should be good enough but in case you really really want you can okay always increase it to 10 20 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds depending upon the need okay let's see uh, this looks good 18000 units so i move around a little bit to make sure that it is not uh, too saturated or anything it is still 11000 units here and there is it saturated you change no 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 it is not saturated no if it is saturated if it is saturated then you have to change okay mm. for example if i go here mm. Right now is twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. If I increase this to suppose twenty milliseconds, uh, now it is thirty three thousand. Thirty three thousand. So suppose if I make five hundred, mm -hmm. uh, this is fully saturated. It is mm -hmm. maxed out. So mm -hmm. I don't want that. It is mm -hmm. too much. So I keep it lesser. Mm -hmm. And now it is within the range. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> so the way I figure out is by looking at this number here. Mm -hmm. okay. This is on auto contrast mode. If you actually do the fixed scaling. You will see that it is uh, pretty dim. Okay. That is how dim the Im image is. Uh, but if it is on, on auto contrast, everything looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So don't go by just by visuals. Always go and check the numbers before you compare two images. Mm -hmm. All right. So I will now. I'm uh, happy with the images. I will stop live. And I always do manual exposure. I never do auto expose because if I do auto expose, it will keep. exposing until it gets to a particular count here okay so which i don't want auto contrast is on next uh, again auto focus or z uh, or manual focus whatever i want i auto focus is pretty good in this case and i will scan now all right so ideally the object should go to each location and it should look green 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 but it is looking gray here just because it is looking uh, red here the actual image is gray scale because the camera is gray scale it doesn't see colors the colors that you see are fake colors that uh, that is based upon the parameters i choose here okay so good thing is all the points are in focus amazing uh, it rarely happens <laughs> but if the sample preparation is good then it happens okay now it is going point by point rapidly and as i zoom in you will see that it is going to stitch images on the fly okay now it is attaching the images one by one like this and now you see that thing and same thing it is been stitching stick up and this is the area which i exports a lot <laughs> Mm. It got photo list. I image here and image this. Okay, as soon as the imaging is done, it auto contrast everything to the best color. And now this is my image. You can uh, play around with the color, turn off, turn on different colors like this. Uh, if you want to change the intensity of a particular color, you close this, close this, and now you can adjust it here in the fixed scale. Suppose I want to make this a little dimmer. I increase this number to number two or the table four number. It becomes dimmer. Okay. Uh, apart from that, if you don't like this green color, you want it to be pink color. So all you have to do is to go to uh, view and then there is a tool window and dimension selector. So it will then allow you to choose the colors. So suppose I want uh, this uh, thing to be pink color. Okay. Like. And now everything is pink, pink, pink. So whatever color you want, anything can be done. Uh, and with regards to saving the images, it's sort of uh, it's right now here. I can go and save this image. Uh, it will save it to whatever location I want. Mm -hmm. Other than that, people sometimes say that oh, it's too large of an image. I don't want it to be saving like that. I just want a picture. 
So what I suggest is zoom into the area of choice. There is a scale bar. There is something called snipping tool, and take a nice picture. Like this. And there you go. This is your image. Okay. So all of these can be done like this, or you can always go here and then file and save as. And then you can do a VSI or Big TIFF. This can be opened in Fiji, or you can also export as TIFF series. Yeah. It will be a giant file. Just to let you know, this big of area, if you are imaging, it will be in already hundreds of megabytes or gigabytes also. Because imagine so many tiny 40x images were stitched together. Each was 2k by 2k image, so it's a huge image. In fact, you can see the numbers here. Mm. Properties. Properties should be somewhere here. See it. Yeah. So it is 15,000 pixels by 15,000 pixels. Okay. So it's a giant image. And on top of that, the 2x image also is there. So if you add up everything, it will be a huge image. Okay. Uh, yeah. It is 1.35 gigabyte. Mm -hmm. So that is how rapidly you can increase in size. And I am not ex exporting it yet. It is just a uh, raw data. If you export it, it will be bigger than that. So that's why it's very difficult to handle this data on normal computers. Hence, we suggest them to take a screenshot. <laughs> that works much better. Of course, you'll be losing a lot of resolution in that, but it does the job. Okay. So overall, that's the protocol for using this microscope. Save and finish, and we are done with that. Now. One small thing which I didn't show was that the different layers can be separated. Uh, I will go to the view mode and show that in a minute. Uh, but before that, any other questions? If you want to open a uh, Fuji for analysis, what file is just saved? So it will save as .dot vsi file. Mm. You cannot open directly in Fuji. You need to have a plugin in mm. Fuji for opening th that file. Mm -hmm. But it can be done. But it will be a huge file, as you can see. Your <laughs> computer will crash if it. So we would use here too. Yeah. yeah. So cell sense works pretty well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I have uh, <coughs> just regular EVM for my uh, black white grayscale, can you open Fiji in change color? Yeah. And Sounds like I have not how to use Fiji. Yes. And here you can see that there are layers. Uh, this is the overview, and this is the 40x. I can always go here, right-click, and extract. If I do that, it will pull out this image and create a circular document. And if I say extract, it will not happen right away. It will take some time. And don't ever believe this block. <laughs> this doesn't work. I don't know who designed it, but uh, it takes longer than what it shows you know, many times. Okay, but overall. That is how it will extract a new file, and then you can then do the same savings and other things like that. So overall, that's all the big picture, and then we shut down in the reverse order. Uh, first software, then the hardware. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, it won't matter really if how we are switching it off, but the most important thing is you turn off the software before you turn off the hardware, or else it will give errors, and it won't like it. Yeah, so that's the overall thing. I will start closing the things. Yeah, it's almost done. Five seconds. Yeah. So this is the new image which has been pulled out, as you can see. Okay. I'll close this guy. Don't save any. Close this. Okay. And again, the same thing is here. Restart computer function. Mm -hmm. so sometimes we can use that. You restart from there, then the schedule remains. Yeah, right. yes. mm. if I double click, mm. it should lead to this window, and then I say restart. Yes. Mm. Then I will be able to restart without logging mm. off from this window. This guy, take out the slides, put this back, 
leave the screwdriver here. And some users, they use the ICG channel. Okay. So for using the ICG channel, what we need to do is, uh, on the software, we have to click side three. Then it will turn the wheel to number five. Okay. Because number five is side three. And then I have to use this guy, open it. This comes off, like this. And then I place it here, peacefully. This would be number five if I if I had to press side three. Right now it's number three is exposed. Number five is here. That is the one I, I need to actually replace. But for the sake of showing, I will show you. I unscrew this one a little bit, and this comes out. Ideally, it is not stuck. It has been stuck for quite some time. Yeah, there you go. This comes out, and I take this filter. This is the ICG filter. Handle it carefully, thousand dollars worth. Place it slowly, like this in here. It sets in. Then you take this, tighten this, open this, and slowly slide it in, and then screw it in. So this way, I have changed the channel to ICG. ICG is far red, like 780 excitation and 850 emission. Okay. Well, you say it's supposed to be a precision 5? Yeah, because the set settings are designed for that. But, so, but you were putting it at precision 3? Uh, right now, because I didn't change it in the software. <laughs> oh, okay. So why can't it be just stay there? Because the people use all these colors in a standard way, like mm -hmm. bright field, happy, fitzy, tritzy, it takes us there, sci mm -hmm. and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. ICG is a rarely used channel mm -hmm. by only one or two specific labs. Mm -hmm. So that why, that's why we keep it out. There is not enough positions for putting ICG also. That, that, that's not five? Uh, that is five. But it's now it's empty? Now it is full with side oh, three. Oh, side three. okay. As, as this says, mm -hmm. side three is number five. Mm -hmm. So, so they change it themselves or? Hmm? No. Oh. I have to change it mm. each time. And whenever they want to image with this ICG, they schedule a time with me. I come and change the filter like this. They start imaging. After the imaging is done, they let me know. I replace the filter. Oh. They are not authorized to do the filter mm. change. Okay. And as you can see, <laughs> the green color. Light is coming from top mm. and it is mm. sending on the green color. All the fun colors, yellow, green, red. Okay. All right. So that was the ICG filter change. This is done. I put this back. And the filter change has to be done when the, at least this and this are off. This and this can be on. They are independent. But when you are changing the filter, this to, needs to be off. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the thing will go crazy because it is connected to the the microscope. Okay. And then as soon as it is done, I place it back. So you change it and then you need to change the setting? Uh, like in the software, I don't need to do much change. I just go to click Psi 3 mm. in the uh, windows and then it will change it to number version number 5. Mm. Version number 5 is exposed. I place the filter there and then load it. Mm. The user already knows that they are supposed to image ICG in the Psi 3 channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all. It's a shame.